Hey, welcome back yet again. So on this episode of the uh, LS Swap Bronco 2 project, we're going to talk about the uh, transfer case and uh, which model it is and what we're going to do to it first. All right, so transfer case. This is a new process 241C, uh, which I believe was used in multiple vehicles or manufacturers. Uh, this one came out of a uh, GM, I believe, Jeff said. Anyway, um, so it's a direct bolt-on to the 4L60E transmission, 27-spline uh, uh, input-output. So output on the trans, and then obviously input on the T-case. Um... I'm not that familiar with stock form transfer cases, but I know a lot of them have a slip yoke, and a slip yoke is definitely not what you want in an off-road vehicle with lots of articulation, um, like a conventional drive shaft. Um, you know, drive shaft slips in the shaft, whereas on a slip yoke, the shaft slides in and out of the T-case. So on a stock truck or whatever these come in, you know, there's not much uh, suspension height. It's basically flat, so that's not a big deal. But in something like this, especially a four-link setup, um, that's not going to be a good thing at all. So what are we going to do about that? Well... They have what's called a slip yoke eliminator kit. Um, there's various types out there. I guess back in the day before an actual kit was available, people would, I guess they call them hack and tap. Basically, they, I think they cut the shaft down and then tapped something and welded the flange on. I don't know. Obviously, that's not what you want to do. Uh, there's companies out there now called uh, J. I think it's JB Conversion. That's one option, which Jeff actually had an order through them first, but they were not going to get them available until mid-December. So I saw another guy's YouTube video, and Tom Woods also has them. So we got this from Tom Woods. He called up, verified all the splines. Uh, he called last week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and here it's already here. So, basically, so basically in a nutshell here, um, this long snout comes off, T case will be disassembled, this main output shaft is taken out, the shorter shaft from Tom Woods is then assembled into the case. And then this becomes the new endpoint. And uh, then you'll have the output flange sticking out. So this will be roughly, you know, right here. And then now we can use a conventional double carbon drive shaft and uh, have it work the way it should work. So let's get started.
All right, so yeah, I just did a little uh, time lapse video. You'll see me for a few minutes, well, luckily seconds on your end, struggling. Uh, there was a couple C clips that, uh, or the snap ring was really a challenge. You know, at the same time, I'm trying not to spread them or break them, so I took my time, but yeah, it gave me a little bit of a fight. So case is open. It was basically empty. What's in here is a little bit of ATF and probably condensation. Um, everything that kind of looks like rust on TV, it's not or on, on the camera. It's not rust. It's just a residue. So I think everything will clean up just fine. From what I can tell, none of these things show where, nothing's missing. Everything's in place, all these slide rails, guides. So again, this is just like a residue. Comes right off when you wipe it. So, all right, let's uh, I'm gonna get to cleaning up on this. All right, so I got everything uh, washed and scrubbed down in the parts washer. Um, so everything's nice and clean separated next step is i'm going to take the main shaft here and basically swap all that stuff over to the tom woods uh short shaft for the uh, sye so let's get that going all right so there's the two shafts side by side basically this is all going to slip off this way and then go right back on the same orientation so you can see how it cuts off you know five, six, eight inches. So all the new parts as I'm assembling it, um, I'll be using the uh, ultra slick assembly lube. That way everything's already pre-lubed. Um, so the first time everything starts spinning, it won't be all bound up. So everything in the TK is will be getting uh, assembly lube. All right, so if I was to read the instructions first, instead of assuming, <laughs> I would to slide the assembly over the new shaft well, the bearings don't slide over the new shaft. So, right in the instructions it says, remove needle bearings if present. So, read the instructions. <laughs> All right, so most of the case has been reassembled here. Uh, basically at the point here to put the chain back on. Um, all the mechanical levers and stuff has been reseated. Everything's oriented right. Everything's got plenty of assembly lube. Um, a couple new seals have already been put in. There's an O-ring in the mechanical lever rod area. Front seal there. And then the front here, there's a cap and a seal. All right, let's move on. All right, there it is, all assembled. Ready to go. So again, this is basically just a, it had to come apart so far anyway to put the Tom Woods slip yoke eliminator in. Um, looks like the case sat for a while without fluid in it. So it had a little bit of like, uh, like an old sludgy ATF inside. So took it all apart and Wire brush, not wire brush, but uh, brushed everything down in the parts washer over there. So that way everything was nice and clean. So, first time doing one of these, I've only done, um, I've done two Ford Bronco Dana 20 transfer cases. Uh, so this is my first aluminum style case, I guess you'd say. So it wasn't too bad, no big deal. Just uh, took my time, did it right, sealed everything up. So we are good to go. Um, now we can now you can move on with the T case and get a cross member built. And here I'm going to try to utilize the factory style or design transmission mount. This is obviously from um, Energy Suspension. Um, it's got the poly bushing to match the motor mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make a cross member in here. Um, get this thing mounted up get all the angles done and then at that point the nine inch Now that that's done too I'll bring the truck back down Set the nine inch up 
kind of at full stuff where I want to, you know, as far back as I can go and then start kind of mocking up a pinion angle and get the four length stuff rolling. So next video will be the cross member. So everything's moving along nice. You know, I'm not killing myself with the project. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm pretty consistent with it. Every couple days, get something else done. Try to get the next step done every week, week and a half. So, but uh, yeah, it's, you just got to do everything uh, in a certain order and get everything ready to go. So this will end this video. And like always, like, subscribe, and uh, wait, wait for more to come out here. There's a whole bunch more coming. So see you guys on the next one.